Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, we take a deeper dive into exactly who Cliff Kingsbury is as an offensive play caller. That plus a whole lot more on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for January 30th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show. As course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly. We appreciate you. The show's grown in a major way because of you. The show has grown in a major way as well because of my man, Ari, who does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube looking good, sounding good. We definitely appreciate him. Check him out on Twitter, at Ari Produces. You can hit me up as well, at your boy Q254. And you know we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. A lot of feedback coming up in segment number three on a bunch of different subjects from the quarterbacks, offensive coordinator, uh, mobile quarterbacks, uh, everything that you can imagine of, uh, you know, identity of the Raiders offense, all that's coming up in segment number three of today's show. Speaking of uh, mobility and quarterbacks and what I've been talking about quite a bit here on the show, in segment number two, we'll talk about and clarify, again, what I'm talking about when it comes to mobile quarterbacks, kind of compare and contrast the top you know, four or five quarterbacks that I'm looking at in this year's upcoming draft and uh, talk about the mobility or even the scrambling ability of the quarterbacks, depending on what you want to say or how you want to call it based off a definition. That'll be in segment number two. Here in segment number one, I'd like to hit you with the news and notes of the day, as we always do. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And of course, everyone's waiting for the Raiders to announce who their offensive coordinator is going to be. There's a bunch of different names that are out there, and still it's the waiting game. Uh, From Ian Rappaport from NFL Network, he expects there to be an announcement earlier this week. Uh, There was nothing on Monday. Maybe something rolls out today, Wednesday. Who knows? But I'm assuming that it's going to happen sooner or than later, especially with the senior bowl going on and practices going on in Mobile, Alabama. You really want to have all your guys, boots on the ground, know what's going on and and kind of start to put everything together on what you're looking at, how you're going to make the identity of the team. One name that is out there, one name that has interview with the team is Cliff Kingsbury, the former Arizona Cardinals head football coach, USC offensive assistant. He has already interviewed with the Raiders. He's interviewed with the Eagles. Obviously, the Eagles, they went and hired Kellen Moore, so Cliff Kingsbury is clearly not getting that job. And who says, maybe Maybe he's not getting the Raiders job either, right? I mean, it, it, we just don't know. There's a couple of names out there that could, it could potentially go their way. I think Alex Van Pelt, the former Browns offensive coordinator, I think he's a real deal candidate. I think Clint Kubiak, if they wait and don't, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't announce it, week if they wait until uh, after the Super Bowl then maybe uh, he could be a guy Uh, let's see there's other guys like uh, Thad Lewis who the Raiders have interviewed he's the quarterback coach in Tampa Bay they've sat him down and interviewed him as well so there's a few names out there that could be intriguing and that the Raiders could go in that direction and then there's names out there and there's some rumors out there about a former head coach and a lot of people think either either it's Adam Gase or Frank Reich and look I haven't heard that I had people hit me up on my radio show have you heard about this secret uh, coach that's coming in as a potential offensive coordinator and like I said uh, the names that are floating out there are Frank Reich and Adam Gase I haven't heard that myself I've seen that floated out there but again until I actually hear it and hear it from someone that I think is you know a credible source and understands what they're talking about and where it's coming from I don't want to report that but I know that people have hit me up and asked me hey what do you know about this and what do you know about that as far as I'm concerned nothing because I, I haven't heard that from someone that I think is you know very credible and, and again or has talked talk to me about it I just don't know uh, so, again, I'm sure that the, the reports are out there and they could be very accurate just as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about that. So that's just that. If that happens, then, of course, we'll be here talking about it here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. But Cliff Kingsbury is a guy that is uh, interviewed with the Raiders already. So on Monday on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920, I had Alex Clancy, host of Lockdown Cardinals, on the show talking all things Cliff Kingsbury just because, well, obviously he knows him from the time where he was the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. So I just got a couple sound bites that I want you to hear about Cliff Kingsbury and, you know, his uh, his offensive approach. And I'll tell you, after I was done interviewing Alex, I was not convinced that Cliff Kingsbury is the right guy for the job. But off top, here's Alex Clancy talking about the overall assessment of Cliff Kingsbury, just the play caller in general. What is your overall kind of assessment of Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator, like just the play caller in general? 
He's one of the most frustrating specimens I've ever had to watch with my eyes. <laughs> I mean, it's like, because, Hugh, listen, like, one of my favorite things to say when he was head coach here for a while was he could put together a great movie trailer, but the movie usually isn't so good. Like, mm. he'll pull play calls out of his rear, like, where has that been for the last nine quarters? When you see uh, an offense cratering with the likes of Kyler Murray and DeAndre, and DeAndre Hopkins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and it's just, it's frustrating. But the good is really good. And I, I just think, you know, to his credit, or, you know, to be fair, I just think the head coaching role was not for him, but that doesn't mean that if he was were to be honed in as just an offensive coordinator, that that would be too tall of a task. So it's, it's funny, as you hear these sound bites from Alex, it's almost like a love-hate relationship. Like you see and hear things that are good, and then it's like always followed with a yeah, but. So it just seems like with Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona, at least, it was very inconsistent. Again, I know Cliff back when he was at Texas Tech, and I thought he did some really good things. It's just his teams couldn't win because the defense didn't play worth the salt. But the offense was always really dynamic. So one element of the offense that I know Antonio Pierce wants to use is the run game. So here's Alex Clancy talking about how much of the importance of the running game is in Cliff Kingsbury's offense. How, how important was the run game? to Kingsbury it was everything um and we didn't really realize it as we were watching the Cardinals until the 2021 season took off it was because so James Conner came in 2020 2021 he was a or he came in 2021 he was in all world I mean he scored you know double digit touchdowns he was the focal point of the offense and one of the biggest issues offenses face especially ones that aren't built you know like the 49ers or like these powerhouse offenses is if you rely on one guy and that doesn't work then what? Right. And, you know, Kyler Murray was brought in to run this high-powered offense. They had one of the best receivers in the league in DeAndre Hopkins. And when it wasn't going through James Conner properly, they would falter. You know, when injuries happen, and any running back that touches the ball as much as James Conner has through his first handful of seasons, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, envision the guy touching the ball 25 times a game and, and lasting through an entire season. So once that didn't work um, – that, that's where issues came into play. So there's a positive right there that the run game is really important. And look, it's so funny. You talk about spreading the ball out and, you know, having the air raid offense. And most people believe it's just throw the ball around the yard 50, 60 times a game. But it really is important to have a strong run game. And so, uh, again, that's an element that I know Antonio Pierce is, is going to want to put into his offense. And he should especially if you have a guy like, well, Zamir White, obviously he's under contract. Josh Jacobs is going to be a free agent, but the Raiders could choose to bring him back and sign him before uh, he even hits free agency if they so choose to. Or they could always dip into the draft and go get some more running backs. I just think that that is a staple of the Raiders' offense that they need to have. Uh, I said it before. I said it on Monday. I really liked what the Lions did in the first half against the 49ers, being able to hit them with a little thunder and lightning between David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. And I'd love to see that kind of dynamic with the Raiders offensively. I think that would be awesome, but still got a couple more sound bites here from Alex Clancy, host of Locked On Cardinals talking about Cliff Kingsbury. And this one is what he believes Cliff Kingsbury's biggest hangup or struggle would be if he was the Raiders offensive coordinator or any other team in the league's offensive coordinator. If he was tasked with just being the offensive coordinator, and this is for the Raiders or any other team, like any other team that's interviewed him, there's been a couple out there. What do you think would be his biggest struggle for him? Running the ball on third and short, mm. not needing to go for the gusto all the time. Like, Boring offenses work. Boring is good. He doesn't know how to do boring. Mm, he, doesn't, okay. he doesn't have that substantiated foundation of, you know what? I always go back to the Remember the Titans line where it's like, you've got seven plays, you run them, they're like, Novocaine, just keep running them and they'll work, or whatever it was. I butchered the line, but he doesn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have it. Right. That's, again, we haven't seen him just as an OC in the NFL yet. So right. maybe if it's just, you know, blinders on like a, like a racehorse, if he can just do that and develop a quarterback with a QB coach, maybe he'll be in his zone where he won't have to worry about anything else. And maybe he'll just be able to focus on calling plays on game day. So there you go. Again, love-hate relationship when it comes to Alex Clancy and Cliff Kingsbury. And it's funny, I used to uh, talk to him all the time and do crossover editions with him all the time and uh, knew early that he did not – uh, think that Cliff was a very good head coach. Again, it's a different ball game though when you're just a coordinator. We've seen plenty of coaches across the National Football League that are great coordinators, terrible head coaches, right? And look, Josh McDaniels, who was the former Raiders head coach, will probably get another job as the offensive coordinator sooner rather than later because he is a good offensive coordinator, but he wasn't worth the salt as the head football coach. So, I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. We can go back to Norv Turner, right? He was the Raiders head coach at one point. Really good OC, not a very good head coach. The final soundbite I want you to hear from Alex Clancy, again, host of Locked On Cardinals, talking all things Cliff Kingsbury is, well, you heard what his biggest struggle or hang-up would be. 
What would his biggest strength be if he was the team's offensive coordinator? Talked about his biggest weakness. What would you think as an offensive coordinator would be his biggest strength? There is genius in there, and that's the most frustrating part. Mm. I don't know what he's doing from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. at the facilities if things aren't working. I don't know what he does there. I don't know if he's playing solitaire. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think he tried to put way too much. He's put way too much pressure on himself, and I think that if he can just let it come to him, like he's called some absolutely incredible and timely plays that have won Cardinals games, and it wasn't luck. It wasn't anything. It was just he's had maybe to what. 48 and 17 is what 65. So he coached 65 games for the Cardinals. I think give or take in the playoff game, he had maybe four or five games that were perfect. Wow. And if you can, if he can have that, if he can find that he's got genius in him, he truly does. Cause I've seen it play here, play there. It's not luck of the draw. The weirdness that yields the genius is something that very few offensive minds have. And he has it, but only like 10% of the time. So there you go. His biggest strength right there is somewhere in there. There's some genius. <laughs> right? I mean, again, that's not a glowing review. Somewhere there's some genius. And out of all the games that he was the head coach of the Cardinals, right, he had just a handful of games where Alex saw some genius in his play calling. And, you know, again, maybe, like Alex said, that all changes if the only thing he has to worry about is offensive play calling. Maybe that would be, you know, a different element and different bag. He'd be able to really focus in and have consistent play calling. But, again, there was nothing that Alex said that gave me high hope that he was going to be a really good offensive coordinator. And maybe Maybe that's why he's had multiple interviews for an OC position and has not got hired yet. Again, don't know what the Raiders are going to do. Uh, they could make a decision. They could announce Cliff Kingsbury today. They could announce somebody else. Again, I think the leaders in the clubhouse are probably Alex Van Pelt, uh, maybe Thad Lewis. I think that that's someone that uh, AP would have some kind of familiarity with and be comfortable with. Uh, like I said, Clint Kubiak from the 49ers, if he ever gets a chance to actually interview. I did see from Albert Breer that he was interviewing with the Patriots on Monday, which I don't know how that's possible when the 49ers are still playing. And I thought the only way that the Raiders were going to be able to interview him was if the 49ers lost to the Lions, which they obviously did not. So I got to get some clarity on that because maybe I'm wrong and maybe the Raiders can interview him this week or maybe even next week. Well, I won't think they'd interview him next week leading into the Super Bowl. So maybe this would be the week to interview him. I got, I'll get some clarity on that uh, and bring it back to the table just because I do think that that would be an intriguing a person to add to the mix, a guy that comes from obviously the Shanahan tree. And we know that the Shanahan offense is a really good offense. So that's the latest and the greatest when it comes to uh, the offensive coordinator search. Uh, again, there could be a mystery guy out there. I'm not 100% sure of that, but that's what's, you know, kind of being floated out there. Also, my final nugget here for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, the Patriots, they actually requested to interview Raiders passing game coordinator Scott Turner for their OC position. So, uh, you know, take that for a grain of salt. I thought that that was a guy that when Antonio Pierce was named the interim head coach, I thought he was actually going to be the interim uh, play caller, the OC, instead of uh, instead of Bo Hardigree. I thought it was going to be Scott Turner because he has familiarity with that, but he was not. So uh, he's uh, he was in New England interviewing for the OC position. I don't know if the Raiders have any interest of bringing him back or not, but clearly New England had interest in talking to him. And they talked to a lot of guys like 11 or 12 already uh, for their open offensive coordinator position. So Gerard Mayo is definitely exhausting and wasting no time, exhausting as many outlets as he can trying to find his next offensive coordinator. But that's what I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, kind of news and notes of the day. Coming up segment number two, want to talk about the top, you know, four or five quarterbacks coming up in the draft, uh, how I feel about them, talk about mobility versus scrambling, scrambling versus mobility, whatever you want to call it, but talk about what I'm looking for and the different levels to the game because there's different levels of extreme. There's one super extreme level, and then there's another that's just, hey, I got to get out of trouble. All that is coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And if you're like me, well, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. And I realize, Raider Nation, it's going to be different for all of us this year because, well, there is no win for Raider Nation. Chiefs, 49ers, you cannot win at all. But still, the Super Bowl is one of those things. At least I like to hang out with my friends, invite them over to the house, or host a party, and I'll actually be at a party at the M Resort that I'll be hosting uh, here locally. So that's what I'll be doing for Super Bowl Sunday. But FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two. 
or even three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets on which player will score a touchdown, how many scores will, or how many points will be scored, and a whole lot more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more of FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get back into the quarterback conversation. I think this is going to be obviously one of the biggest decisions for the Raiders this offseason. You know, what are they going to do? Are they going to stay pat at number 13, right, and, and get maybe a quarterback that falls to them? Are they going to go and get an offensive lineman, maybe a cornerback? You know, how are they going to address the quarterback room? Like, that's going to be one of the biggest decisions that Tom Telesco, Antonio Pierce, and company have to make this offseason. Obviously, Aiden O'Connell's in the room, but I expect Jimmy G and Brian Hoyer both to be gone so you've got to address it you've got to fix it and uh, add quarterbacks to the room some way somehow and so I've been talking about the fact that I feel like the Raiders need to get a mobile quarterback I feel like all teams across the league need a quarterback that can get themselves out of trouble and you know you can look at mobile and think Lamar Jackson or you can get it you can say mobile and think Brock Purdy right Brock Purdy had 51 big yards in that championship game against the Lions that really helped uh, lead them to victory, in my opinion. Now, my guy, Johnny Raider, who I respect the hell out of, even though he doesn't believe it, I, I do respect the hell out of him. He, he listens to the show all the time. He feeds, gives me feedback on Twitter all the time. Uh, let me know on Monday that I'm using the wrong word when I talk about mobility. I need to be using scramble, and I don't think it's a big deal. I think when I say mobility and I tell you exactly what I mean by mobility, I think that that should be good. But... Johnny said I'm using the wrong word. So let's just say I'm using the wrong word. So scramble, mobility, whatever you want to call it. If, if, if scramble, you know, makes it make more sense, fine. I, I want to see a quarterback that can scramble, that can get themselves out of trouble, that could pick up seven or eight yards, pick up a first down, like Brock Purdy did with about 430 left in the game on Sunday against the Lions where he picked up some big yardage on the ground and was able to extend the drive and really salt the game away. I mean, it wasn't the deciding factor, but it had a lot to do with it. I just think that that's a big deal, and that's what the Raiders need to have. And I'll give you examples of it in just a hot minute, but on my ESPN show, Game Night, on Monday night, I had Herm Edwards, and we have Herm on every single Monday night. It's fantastic. And he was talking about the scrambling ability of Brock Purdy or the mobility of Brock Purdy. And so uh, after that, I doubled down and I asked him, I asked him about mobile quarterbacks and how I feel that that's what an uh, element that quarterbacks need to have these days just to be able to keep defenses honest, pick up first downs, whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be extreme like Lamar, but they've got to be able to wiggle and get out of room or get out of trouble if need be. Here's Herm Edwards on my radio show game night on ESPN Radio responding to that. I wanted to ask you as we close out about mobility with quarterbacks. You mentioned he was able to do something with his legs. How important is that you have that element? Not necessarily Lamar Jackson running around like that, but have that element where you are able to make something when you're in trouble. Well, I think it's unique. To, to have that ability, you don't have to be a great one like you mentioned, Lamar Jackson. Look, even Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is a, a, a you know, he, he's an adequate runner. I mean, he's, he's not going to run for a thousand yards during the season, but he's going to make enough plays with his legs, and he's going to extend plays with his legs. To keep, it, it keeps the defense in check because now you have to, you have to, your rush lanes have to be correct. You have to stay in those lanes. You have to understand when you blitz a guy. Um, you better get home because if you, you leave a lane open, they're going to leave, and they, you could get exposed, right? So that's the second element of a quarterback that can move. Now, you say that, you know, we have, we have two, two great ones that um, Patrick Mahomes is chasing, and that's Joe Legend, Montana, <laughs> and obviously Captain America, America and, uh, and Tom Brady, who played in the pocket, mm -hmm. you know, and, and set a bunch of records. But to have that element of watch it, you better keep him in the pocket, guys. You let him get out. You can extend some plays. That uh, that becomes a problem. So there was Herm Edwards just talking about, you know, mobility, scrambling, right, being able to keep plays alive with your legs, which, again, is all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for an extreme when it comes to Lamar. It could be as simple as what you saw Brock Purdy do on Sunday against the Lions, right? It, it's, it's one extreme to the other. But let's just go over the top five quarterbacks in this draft. Is it five? I got, yeah, I got five written down that I just want to kind of uh, explain to you how there's so many different levels to this. And you can go one level to another level and still be, still be right. Right. And still be kind of what I'm looking for. Like Caleb Williams, we all expect he's going to be the number one overall pick last year at USC he threw for 3,600 plus yards. 
He ran for only 136. So not very much, right? He likes to do his work from the pocket. He's really good at that, but he's able to roll out. You see him roll out quite a bit as well. And, and you know, he's got such dynamic wide receivers that, you know, he could step back in the pocket, you know, dance a little bit and then deliver the ball. Similar to what you see from like a CJ Stroud, right? Again, a guy that's not uh, looking to run. Uh, he's trying to use his wide receivers he, and he's very accurate. And he can hit them on, on, on in stride and really they can make plays afterwards. Plus, like I said, Caleb Williams has so many skilled players around him that he really doesn't need to get up out of there but he can again ran for 136 yards in 2023 now Jaden Daniels who is my QB1 now that's extreme this is extreme left this is way closer to Lamar than you know closer to Brock Purdy uh Jaden Daniels he threw for 3,800 plus yards in 2023 but he also ran for 1,100 right and I'm not looking for 1,100 I'm not looking for a thousand I'm looking for a guy that can make plays happen but that is extreme now he is my number one quarterback and I've let it be known he's my number one quarterback because I think the familiarity with Antonio Pierce means something obviously he can get it done with his arm he can get it done with his legs but that familiarity that comfort with Antonio Pierce I think it really does mean something so that's what pushes him over the top to be my number one quarterback is that he has that factor as well that he wants to play for AP that means something to me now it might not mean something to everybody and you know what in the grand scheme of things it might not mean anything it really might not but for me that was the deciding factor and what made him my number one quarterback is that he's very familiar uh he wants to, to play for ap he's been at allegiant stadium supporting ap that to me goes a long way especially after you saw in a small sample size what jack jones was able to do another guy very familiar with ap who wanted to play for him so that's a one super extreme now one that's not quite extreme one that's closer to what we saw from brock purdy how about bo nix 4,500 plus yards passing in 2023. That's fantastic. Getting it done with his arms there at Oregon. And then 234 yards on the ground. So that's much more of, hey, you know, you're going to have maybe 50 yards rushing this game or 40 yards rushing this game. You know, maybe an extreme of 60 or something. But you're not going for 1,100 plus yards like Jaden Daniels. So Bo Nix is a guy who, one, is at the Senior Bowl. I'm excited about, you know, getting the coverage of the Senior Bowl to see how he's doing. I think that he has an opportunity to wow some folks, not only at the Senior Bowl, but when he goes to the Combine in Indy as well. Uh, that's that's phenomenal. And the last two years at Oregon, he really stepped his game up and played his tail off. So that's a guy that is really, I think, in, in real consideration, especially if the Raiders just stay there at number 13. He may fall in their lap, and he could be a guy that could probably execute everything that they want to do offensively really well and still has the opportunity to get out of trouble if need be with his legs. Again, something I'm looking for. Michael Penix, whew, almost 5,000 yards passing, only eight yards rushing, <laughs> right? So he's not really getting out of there too much. Now, we've seen him uh, run and pick up a first down here and there, but uh, one, that Washington offensive line was really good uh, in 2023 where he didn't get sacked a whole lot, and he was able to get the ball out of his hands. And again, if you throw for almost 5,000 yards, then you're in a good position. But he does have the ability just to you know, keep plays alive and, and get out of harm's way and, you know, even roll the pocket a little bit and deliver the ball downfield. His biggest question is going to be the medicals. There's no doubt. You know, he's also at the uh, Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, he's already kind of done his measurements, and his hand was an extremely large hand, especially for his size at 6'2". They thought that that hand was uh, huge, huge, right? And, of course, we always hear about hand size. The problem with him, again, is the, the medicals. If the me medicals check out, He's also, like Bo Nix, in my opinion, a guy that could be available there at number 13 that I think the Raiders should be paying attention to. And finally, not a big Drake May guy, just not, but this is another guy that has the ability, 3,600-plus yards passing in 2023, 449 yards rushing. Uh, you know, And the year before, he had about almost 700 yards rushing. So he's not quite Jaden Daniels, but he clearly has athletic ability. Right? Again, this is, this is kind of the levels to it. Like You can go from extreme – like, uh, like Jaden Daniels, uh, over 1,100 yards on the ground to almost nothing, like Michael Penix with eight yards. And then there's in-betweens, right? Caleb Williams, 136 yards. Bo Nix, 234. Drake May, 449. Right? You can see the different elements there. That's what I'm talking about. So they come in different, you know, extremes, and they come in different, you know, shapes and sizes. Let's put it like that. There's different flavors uh, at the shop. Right. It just depends on what you choose to be the flavor that you're really looking for. So there's a bunch of different guys to choose from. And I'll wrap it up with this. Aiden O'Connell, and this is not a disrespect to Aiden O'Connell at all, but there's some that believe, oh, he he has wiggle. He can run if he needs to. You could teach him to run. 
It's just not his thing, right? And I don't want to act like, you know, okay, well, he's just going to, they're going to teach it. They're going to, you know, pound it in his head where he's got to take off and run and he's going to do that. In his whole co collegiate career there at Purdue, his whole time there, he had 95 career carries for negative 274 yards. So basically that's taking a lot of sacks. I mean, that's, how, how does that happen, Q? That's what, yeah, he took a lot of sacks. 95 carries for negative 274 yards. 2,219 total yards passing is what he had with the Raiders in 2023, his rookie year, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions, 17 carries, 11 total yards. So obviously him getting up out of there is not really something that he's going to do. And you can pound it in his head all you want, but it's almost like, you know, trying to squeeze blood from a turnip, right? It's just, it's just, you're not going to get too much there. How about CJ Stroud, right? He's the guy that everyone talked about going into the draft last year. He's not athletic enough, doesn't move enough. Right, He sticks in the pocket. He doesn't run. But we saw him run really well against Georgia. Oh, well, maybe he has a little bit of ability. And everybody who's everybody said if he did it once, he could do it again. His rookie year, 4,108 yards passing. And he ran for 167. Again, that's not extreme. But going back, that's kind of somewhere in between what? Around the Bo Nix uh, rushing. Uh, obviously, it's more than the Michael Penix rushing. Uh, you know, it's, it's around the Caleb Williams rushing. That's kind of what he did. He has the ability. Again, that's all you're asking for is the ability, willingness and ability and ableness to, to go and do it, and he has it. So all those guys you know, are in the mix there. Caleb Williams, Jaden da Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, Drake May. Aiden O'Connell, who is currently on the Raiders roster, obviously doesn't have too much as far as the wiggle goes. So my preference, and it's just my preference, it does not have to be yours, is a guy that's got a little something-something. That's all I'm asking for. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what decision the Raiders make, what way they decide to go as far as the quarterback goes and how they uh, fix that quarterback room and add talent in there. Because, again, Jimmy G and Brian Hoyer both, in my opinion, are gone uh, sometimes this offseason. But that's what I got for you for seven number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, kind of explaining and breaking down uh, the mobile quarterback, the scrambling quarterback, whatever the case may be. And Johnny Raider, I definitely appreciate you, man. It's always great to have the feedback back and forth, even though you know you don't think I appreciate it, but I do appreciate the feedback back and forth on Twitter. And that's with anybody. You can always hit me up at your boy Q254. And of course, we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707 654 Four six nine three. We'll get into that uh, coming up in segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we do that, though, I do want to tell you about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, or you just want to look good, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, you're not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Quick update from my guy Jason. He said, hey, Q, I hear you talking about me on the podcast. Yes, I'm going to bring home the win. I'm bringing the home the win every single time, every day of the week, and twice on Sunday. Shout out to you, Jason, man. I ain't mad at you. Do your thing. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call from Slots Ledoux out of Sacramento Cali County. He's calling to talk about what he believes the Raiders' identity needs to look like. Here he is, Slots Ledoux. Hey, Q. It's Slots Ledoux from Sacramento County, 916. Uh, I called you a couple months ago, and I said that I don't think Mark Davis or the Davises in general know how to hire coaches. But I think they I think they did a good job this time. I mean, it was a no brainer. I mean, there's literally no way you can lose. If Antonio Pierce turns out to not, not to do anything for us, at least he gave him a shot. At least he trusted in the fans, he trusted in your players, you listened to him and you gave it a shot. There's uh, nothing else you can do with that. Now, as far as uh what the Raiders, like their offensive uh, playbook, should uh, be heavy on, I'm always thinking of power rushing with the Raiders. You know, you go back to Bo Jackson, Marcus Allen, Napoleon Kaufman. You know, uh, when we went to the Super Bowl, we had Tyrone Wheatley, you know. Um, even in the last 20 years, when have we been successful? You know, we've had Latavius Murray, Josh Jacobs, 
you know, you you really uh, – what's Lincoln Kennedy always saying? You want to run it down their throats. That will make everything so much easier for whoever's playing quarterback, whether we try to get Jaden Daniels or, you know, uh, stick with Aiden O'Connell or do whatever else. you got to have a strong running game to give them some breathing room. And if, uh, you know, everybody's just pouring through that offensive line, it's not going to do anything, which makes me think we should just stick at 13, and that's prime real estate for getting a great offensive lineman. So that's what I hope to see. Real happy to see Antonio Pierce be the coach. And uh, always lovely to hear from you, Q. Have a good one. Thanks so much for the call, my man. Appreciate you. The power running game. Man, that's got to be a major part if, uh, of the Raiders' identity. I do believe. I really like, as I mentioned earlier in the show, really like what I saw from the Lions in the first half against the 49ers. I don't know why they went away with it, away from it in the second half. That's something they should have continued to pound the rock, right? More David Montgomery, more Jameer Gibbs, more Jameer Gibbs, more David Montgomery, but they just went away from it. I would love to see the Raiders have a you know one-two punch like the Tyrone Wheatley and Napoleon Kaufman or Tyrone Wheatley and Charlie Garner, uh, you know, combo. I would love to see that that one-two punch. Uh, that that would be awesome. I, I really would. Uh, the little lightning and thunder action, right? Um, you know, I I don't know if they're gonna get. Uh, get them at 13. I don't, I don't know what they're going to get at 13 if they're going to stay at 13. Uh, but to have that power running game, you, you mentioned that the, you know, the offensive line needs to continue to be bolstered up. Again, at 13, they might go get an offensive lineman. They might go get a corner. They might have a quarterback fall to them. But at some point, you're absolutely right. That offensive line has to be addressed, and it has to be improved. It really, really does. So, Slots, thanks so much for the call. Definitely appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Tori in the 605. It says, hey, Q. Tori from the 605, South Dakota Raider fan. I had a quick thought about our offense. Trade up for Jaden Daniels, bring in Russell Wilson, and keep Aiden O'Connell. Let all three know that it's their job to win that starting position. I think we try to keep Josh Jacobs and Zamir right and run a two-back offenses at time. Keep Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Trey Tucker as receivers. Mayer and Hooper as tight ends. Can you imagine the plays that could be drawn up with all those weapons? I'd love to design plays with that offense. That's Tori in the 605, South Dakota Raider fan. Thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. And yeah. Ideally, they have that two-man backfield. I would love to see it, right? I mean, we talked about it a couple of times. I'd like to see the running backs look a little bit different, not really be exactly the same, but I do like what Zamir brought to the table. Of course, love what Josh Jacobs brings to the table. Would love to see a little bit more speed, honestly. And Tom Telesco mentioned this when he uh, had his print press conference last Wednesday. I'd like to see more speed at every area of the team, offensively and defensively. I think the Raiders need to continue to build their speed. And as far as the wide receivers go, I love Trey Tucker's speed. I wish he was bigger, right? I, I, I like what Trey Tucker brings to the table. I think that there's a big-time element that he does bring, and I think that there's a big role for him in the offense. I'd like to see a little taller wide receiver that has that speed as well, kind of like a Jamison Williams that the, uh, the, the, the Lions have. With all that speed, I think that that really would help uh, to be able to stretch the field and get a guy that can go up there and get that 50-50 ball. That's another element that I'd like to see. And the good thing is this draft – is loaded with wide receivers. So you can get that guy at some point. And it doesn't have to be a first-round guy. You can get that sprinkled in throughout the course of the draft. So I just think that some more speed needs to be added to the wide receiver position. But honestly, I think more speed needs to be added to the whole roster as far as I'm concerned. Thanks so much for the text. It's great to hear from you. Up next, Raider Meatloaf. He's calling to talk about the quarterbacks. Has a question about one or two that may wow everyone at the Combine. Here he is, Raider Meatloaf. Hey, what's up, Q? It's Raider Meatloaf here. Uh, just wanted to talk about the uh, the quarterback situation and um, it's an exciting thing to talk about and um, it does feel like this might be the way that we're going to go if we do trade up. But um, just from last year, Anthony Richardson just came out absolutely out of the woodwork as far as just this absolute freak that you know that you everybody just wanted a piece of them um is there somebody like that that you think could go into the combine and test obviously not on his level but a quarterback that's just going to blow everybody away um if there is one that is can do that it might be Bo Nix from athletic standpoint um and you know if he if he does his thing at the combine, you might that might be somebody that we should look into. But obviously, I'm with you, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, cool with all of them. Uh, want to want to get your thoughts though? Is there anybody that's gonna absolutely just blow everybody away at the combine? 
All right, take care. Bye. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And yeah, there's there's always going to be a quarterback or two, and there's always going to be a couple of players as well that wows everybody at the combine, right? Bo Nix, you mentioned him. He's got a huge opportunity. He's already at the at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Michael Penix is there as well. Uh, they have an opportunity to start their shine there and then go to the combine and continue their shine. Uh, Bo Nix, I believe he he'll shine with his athleticism and his ability and what he was able to kind of build off of the last two years at Oregon. Uh, Michael Penix, uh, his way to shine will be uh, when he gets checked out by the doctors. That is going to be the tall tale sign for him. I love his arm strength. I love his accuracy. Uh, his injuries are a little worrisome, but man, he's a hell of a player. I would love to take a chance on him and know that he's going to be, you know, the quarterback. He's going to give you at least a strong, solid five years without getting injured or without a major injury, right? A little minor injury here or there, uh, a concussion, you know, that's going to happen from time to time. We see that, but uh, man, I just wish that we knew for a fact, and we don't know that about any player, but it's, it's always hard when you're coming into the league with a bunch of injuries and, you know, Jaden Daniels, you want to talk about a guy that's going to wow someone at the combine. Jaden Daniels is going to be in the combination conversation for the number one overall once he uh, once he goes to the combine. There's no doubt. Um, again, I mentioned it in segment number one, 1,100 plus yards rushing. You think he's not an extreme athlete? You think he's not going to wow? And that's what I talk about the combine. It's the underwear Olympics. That's going that's made for him. He's going to earn some money. Somebody's going to earn some money. I think Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix have an opportunity to Michael Penix. Hell, Drake May. Drake May has an opportunity as well. Right. I, th I think we already know about Caleb Williams, where, where he stands. Uh, but guys like that, Bo Nix and, and, and Drake May is already at the top of the list as well, along with Jaden Daniels. But with their extra athleticism, it'll probably shine a little bit more even at the combine. So uh, looking forward to being there and being able to bring all the coverage to you from Indianapolis. Uh, that's going to be fun when it is that time. But thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Uh, up next is a text from Omar in El Paso, and I think this will be the last uh, text that we get to. We'll try to squeeze one more call in. Uh, but this text from Omar in El Paso. Hey, Q, it's Omar in El Paso. Just dropping two cents on the draft. Daniels has to be a priority and should be our first target. Do you think trading Hunter Renfro the next two years, first and second, and a third, uh, and a third year would be good enough for the first overall? Outside help in the trenches, the roster is pretty solid in short term. Resign Josh uh, Jones and Amik, and the secondary is solid. Uh, I'd also like Bo Nix. Guy has 74 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, over 8,000 yards in two years. It shatters Herbert's last two years. So what about trading back to get him and maybe get a third or fourth in the process? Only issue is how many other teams would think about uh, an, a Nix in the teens. Rams, Saints, Seahawks, and Steelers can maybe see a chance for quarterback. What are your thoughts, Q? Thanks. That's Omar in El Paso. And, yeah, I think Bo Nix is going to have a lot of suitors. Uh, I think that there's plenty of teams that are going to be interested in what he's done. Again, the last two years at Oregon were fantastic. I think at the combine, he's really going to wow some folks with his athletic ability. Um, you know, I think it's going to take a lot to trade up to number one. I really do. I think you're looking at at least thir three first round picks, probably a, a player as well, like maybe a Hunter Renfro, uh, maybe a guy on defense that we're not thinking of. Uh, you know, I heard like Trayvon Merrick floated out there. Malcolm Coons was floated out there. Maybe one of those guys uh, could be added to the mix, but also maybe a couple second rounders as well. Like it's going to be a King's ransom. There's no doubt about it. But if you believe that that's your guy and you, that's, you believe that that's your guy that's going to, uh, you know, guide you for the next 10 years, you go do it. Now, the, the 49ers, they traded up and got Trey Lance and it didn't work out. And they traded him to the Cowboys for like a cup of coffee. The good thing for them is they hit on their seventh round pick, Brock Purdy. And well, the rest is history. If it wasn't for that, there's guys looking for jobs. I mean, because you 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 go up and make a trade like that and give up that much capital and you don't hit, you're probably looking for a new job. Like that's the reality of it. Like that's the risk that you take. But you either do it or you don't. You know, they say scare money don't make money. I tell you all the time, I'm scared money. But Tom Telesco, AP, they can't be scared money. They got to, you know, put it all on the table, put their stones on the table and make a decision one way or the other. If they're going to do it, do it. If they're not, don't. You know, as simple as that. But if they second guess themselves and, you know, they're scary to do it, then they're probably in the wrong business. It's just that simple. So thanks for the text, my man. I do appreciate you. Uh, let's see. We'll get one more call in. Paul in Bakersfield. Uh, he's calling to clear up a few games that we've talked about a few times here on the show. And then also uh, kind of starts to starts to put it together with Antonio Pierce and his thoughts on Antonio Pierce's offense. So here's Paul in Bakersfield with a really good call to close us out. What's up, Q? It's Paul calling man from Bakersfield. And um, I just want to call in real quick, man, and it's been bugging me. I've been listening to the last couple of weeks, and uh, the the game that you, you're you talking about, about uh, when we ran all over the Broncos or the Chiefs, where Donald Penn mentioned that we had ran the same play over and over again, and I know you, you're kind of tied between the two games. And 
in my head, I know what game you guys are talking about. I just haven't had a chance to call in. So finally, I'm going to call in. So in 2014, <clears throat> that was our first win of the season when we played the Chiefs. It was a Thursday night game. Uh, Latavius Murray, I believe he, uh, he had just got his first start of the season that game. He only had four carries for 112 yards. Remember, he broke off <clears throat> like a 13-yard touchdown to start the game. And then, like, the next drive, he broke off, like, an 80-yard touchdown, I believe. And uh, he only had, like, four carries that game. But Darren McFadden was also in that game. Um, I think we had Maurice Jones Drew that year, too, and he didn't pan out that well. But in 2016, uh, we played the Denver Broncos. It was, like, week 11 or something like that. It was a Sunday night game at home. And um, that's the game that you were talking about, that Donald Penn was talking about where we just imposed our will, ran the ball the entire game. Latavius Murray had 20 carries that game for like a buck 15, I believe. Um, who else? Jalen Richard had like 65 yards rushing. And DeAndre Washington also had like um, like five carries for like 35 yards. But I remember that game vividly. I watched it at my parents' house, and, man, we were just running the same play. It was mainly the second half where we were just running the ball. Latavius Murray, like eight yards, seven yards, eight yards, seven yards. It was crazy. But um, I think that's the style of football that Antonio Pierce is talking about. And it was winning. It was winning football that year. Um, maybe, unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to get back to that. But I'm hoping this year is the year. So I just wanted to clear that up for you, Q. I know a couple of callers were going back and forth on that game. So it was 2014 and 2016. You have a good one, Q. Go Raiders. Great call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, you got to get me right. Get me right, man. And I knew that those 2014 and 2016, I know all those games really started to blend together. And I was familiar with that 2014 game being the one that was week 10 where uh, the Raiders got their first victory and Latavius Murray had that big day. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't realize that the – the game that I was thinking of when Donald Penn was talking about was actually the Sunday night game against Denver where they ran the same play over and over and over and over. That's good stuff, man. Thanks so much for clearing that up. And I love how you brought AP's offense into it and what you believe he wants to do. And I'm with you 100%. I believe he wants to do the same thing. Have the ability to run the same play over and over and over again and be like, you ain't going to stop it. You just can't. That means you're going to have to have a bully up front. So you got to make some decisions. Quarterback, O-line, you know, p potential cornerback. Right, You can always add pieces on defense. Uh, there's a few areas that I see that the Raiders really need to continue to upgrade on the team, but I know it's in a really good position as well, especially if that defense still continues to play at the level it played in 2023. Paul, thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. That's all I got time for on today's show. I got a text from TM Jones in Vegas. We'll get to that tomorrow. Got some more calls to get to as well. Maybe we'll be talking about a brand new offensive coordinator. I guarantee we'll be talking about something. We got a plenty of uh, conversations that we'll have here each and every day on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. More importantly, most of all, as always, just win, baby.